Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two older brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat, with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left their boat, and their father, and followed him. And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease, and every infirmity among the people.
They're wanting to covet the throne. Even abortion. Was I happy? Was it, did I see about the thing about Roe versus Wade? Yes, I saw that. But what, what does it actually mean? Was it an actual victory? Yes, many of us, we think it's a victory. We have looked at it as being a victory. But what does it actually mean? Because any victory within the world, right? Because this is a worldly landscape that we fight with. Any victory in the world is just setting up another thing that's going to come down to affect us in a different way. We, who are Christians, are supposed to be looking towards God. And there's a difference between what God allows and God's will is. Because a lot of times, we often get those two things confused. It was God's will for me to marry. It was God's will for me to get this house. It was God's will for this or that to happen. It was God's will for a tsunami. It was God's will for a hurricane. It was God's will for fire. But is it really God's will? And should we not be careful what we lay at the foot of the throne and call it God's will? Because oftentimes we need to understand what God allows is quite different than what his will is. I know that there's been many portions of my life even up until now, that I have wanted the throne of God. How do you say that, Father Dimitri? How do you want that? Because I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to do it my way lots and lots of times. Even into my priesthood, I wanted my way. And I want what I want. I want to be happy. I want to be successful. I want, 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 want. But what is it that God's will is for my life? And how much of it do we covet the throne? See, we all who are Christians, we fall in this deadly trap of thinking that we know what God wants. And yet, we continue to sin, we continue to do all the things that we want to do, continue to living all our lives the way we want to live, and then we say, oh, whatever God's will is, it should be done. That's true. That's the model of what Jesus prayed, right? With the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. But how many of us actually search for God's will? See, Satan has looked for the throne of God since the beginning. He is subtle in what he does. And he's trying to dethrone God. The last couple of days, Friday night and Saturday morning, up until about 2.30 yesterday, we had to leave early, we went to a homeschooling convention. So many things that they spoke about was like an eye opener to me. What it truly means to have somebody go into the public schools. The public schools are something that is very dangerous. This is what the theme was almost of the homeschooling situation that we heard. Because from the 1950s to the 60s to the 70s to the 80s, there has been a subtle shift in what we teach our children. At the beginning, I'm sure some of us remember there was prayer in school. And not only was there prayer in school, there was the Pledge of Allegiance. I remember when I first went into school, there was no more prayer. There was still the Pledge of Allegiance where we covered our hearts. But slowly, that Pledge of Allegiance was suddenly, slowly removed. And I'm sure some of you here don't even remember the Pledge of Allegiance even being recited at the beginning of class or the beginning of the day. I don't remember the prayer even being said. I remember doing my cross or saying my prayer when I was eating, but as far as anything else, Everything that they wanted to teach was something that was pushed upon us. And even the whole fact where we have become subject to listening to what that teacher has to say, it's something that happens gradually over the time. They even spoke about the danger of having people raising their hands. 
to get their voice spoken. And you cannot raise, you cannot speak until you are acknowledged. Now, all my life, and I'm sure we have a couple of my teachers here, all of our lives, I never thought anything wrong with that. That's something that I have been used to all of my life. It had been something that I had been used to understanding since the beginning. You don't say anything, you don't chew gum, you don't run in the halls, you don't do any of those things, right? They have a little chart that said in the 1950s and the 1960s, the only problem they had was people chewing gum, getting out of dress code, talking during class, running in the hall. And then they had a chart that showed what was happening in the schools today. Shootings, raping, murder, lust, pornography, you name it, that everything is happening in the schools today. So, what happened? As we slowly and surely, as a society, begin to push God off the throne, which he can't be pushed off the throne, but he can be pushed off the throne within us. Within our hearts, we must understand that there is a throne, so to speak. And who sits there depends on who is going to be in our lives that allows us to make the decision. I know a lot of times the enemy has come in and I have made lots and lots and lots of poor decisions in my life. I have made mistakes, I have sinned, and I have probably sinned more times than I've been holy. And it's a battle for our children. I believe it was in the 1940s and the 1950s, there was a manifesto that had been written about what's going on and how to destroy our country from the inside out. Many of those things on that list have now been accomplished or are being accomplished. And one of those things on the list was indoctrination of our children and making sure that our children are taught what the government wants to teach them. Another one was to remove prayer from the school because it does not belong to them. To institute sex education because now as parents there are laws that are being set in forth that say we do not have the right to teach our children anything that goes against what the government has to say. It's happening right now. A year ago or a couple years ago in California, they tried to put in, and forgive me if I don't get it exactly right, but they tried to put it where you were able, and they were making all the children for about a year to sing praises to the gods of cannibalism, to the gods of war, and to the gods of this world. It was required, not to high schoolers, but to kids. And then enough parents rose up and it got overturned, but for one year it happened. But they tried. And in different parts of the country, it's happening right underneath our nose. It was a very big eye-opener for me yesterday to understand what it means for people to try to cut at the throne, to take over the throne. It was a sobering experience for me. Because now, if you homeschool your children, you're considered the best of terrorists. If you teach something that's opposed to what's going on in the world, you're a terrorist. If you love God, you're a terrorist. It's a reality. It's not something in the distant future. It's not some sci-fi movie. It's not some something that somebody is conspir conspiring about. It's something that's happening right now. And that's why it's very important for us to understand. There are many schools that have actually passed a law, a whatever it's called, that said, it doesn't matter if the kids can read or write, they can graduate anyway. They don't have to know that. They don't have to be proficient in reading. They don't have to be proficient in writing. 
They don't have to be proficient in arithmetic. They don't have to be proficient in anything. We just want to spit them out and get them going in the right direction so that way we can control the narrative of what's going on. How many of us that are parents now have realized these things and are seeing these things? And how many of us will actually send our children to public schools knowing those things? It's scary only if you don't believe in it. If you understand who sits on the throne, and you understand who it is that inhabits this earth, you will know the difference. Because God does not dwell here on this earth. He dwells within us. We are the lights of the world. We are the ones who are supposed to be teaching and training and telling our children what it is and who it is that created the heavens and the earth. We're supposed to be teaching our children what love is, what virtue is. We're supposed to be teaching our children, and as we walk down the street, we're supposed to be talking about what is good. When we're sitting at our meals, we're supposed to be talking to our children about what is holy. We're supposed to be talking to our children about what is pure and righteous. We're supposed to be teaching our children all the things because if we don't teach our children the right things, there will be no problem for the world to swoop in and teach our children the things of, its, of itself. There is hope. It's called turning to the church. And I'm not talking about the people now, right? It is, that's part of it. But in order for the people to learn correctly, the clergy need to be teaching correctly. In order for the clergy to be learning correctly, the hierarchy need to be teaching correctly. And if we see something that doesn't belong, if we see something that doesn't sit left right, if we see something that doesn't belong in our schools, in our homes, in our churches, we need to speak up about those things. And we need to understand who it is that we serve. Again, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Why do so many of our marriages fail? Because we have failed to teach what marriage really means. We have failed. Six out of ten of our children that go to college, leave the faith, and never return. That's the statistics for the Carpathian Russian Church. Six out of ten of our kids who go to college, leave the faith, and never return. Six out of ten. What have we been teaching our children? What have we been teaching the people at the churches? What have we been teaching the people that are going to be taking our places in the future. What's important? I know when I was in school, the most important thing was them, for them to teach me how to get a good career, how to make a lot of money, so that way I could be comfortable. That was my driving point. And when I was in school, I also had different things like woods and welding and architecture and architectural drawing and all these things, guess what? They've almost or mostly been pulled away from the schools. Those are hands on trades. I'm not trying to make today to be a sad day. I'm trying to hopefully make you aware. And for those who are going to be having children and those who have children to understand what the danger is of what's going on in the world. And to teach our children who it is that needs to be sitting on the throne of our hearts. The thrones of our hearts belong to Christ. The thrones of our heart belong to Him who is the creator of the heaven and the earth. The throne of our hearts is something that we need to leave open and not even ourselves to sit on. At one time, the Bible was the most important book 
that was read in our schools. The Bible was something that was taught from everything out. It taught you how to read. It taught you about God. It taught you about every single thing that was important in this world. Guess what? Where the Bible typically is in a lot of houses. Sitting on a shelf, gathering dust. Every one of our Bibles should be falling apart with pages coming out, taped together with duct tape or black electrical tape or whatever it is to hold it together because you use it so much, you, you, you go to it so much that you're wearing it out. The throne of our hearts need to be open for God to sit upon. And we, when we go out into the world, we need to hold our heads up high and say, I am a child of God. I am somebody that's been saved. Learn about your faith. Learn about what the Orthodox Church teaches. Learn about what the scriptures say. For two years, three years, four years, we have had a Bible study. Teaching about what the scriptures say. Why doesn't every single person fight to get on that at 6.30 for two hours every Tuesday? Every week, every day, we have, a, we have a service. Why isn't everybody there praying? What is more important than prayer? What is more important than the scriptures? What is more important than our faith? There's nothing more important than God. But somehow, we allow every day something to derail us, to pull us off, and to make us confused about what we should be doing. We need to trust that God is with us. We need to understand that the battle along the way, we're going to lose some, but the war ultimately at the very end that's already been won. The war is over. The war is completed. When Christ hung his head on the cross and he said, it is finished, the war was over at that moment. It is finished. It has been completed. I have made it whole. I have unified man and God. See, there's a difference between us wanting to become God or to become like God. What the world wants is for us to be individuals who are little gods among the world, saying that there is no need for God. What Christ said is for us to become like Him, to follow after Him, to pick up His cross and follow after him, and to be the people that we need in order to teach our children how to be strong enough to survive what's coming. Put God first in our lives. And I'll end. I know that I've gone a little bit too far, but it's very important for me. Because as I watch Emmanuel, or my oldest son, Emmanuel, and my youngest son, Paniyoti, I see a drastic change. I'm living the life right now where my oldest son, if you ever seen this, will probably be mad, but it doesn't matter. My oldest son wants nothing to do with the church right now. You know how much that grieves me? How much it hurts me? Being a priest? That I failed in my job. I failed. And I pray, and I pray, and I pray for him. And just like I pray for every one of you, every single day, I pray for you. And I go to the Lord and intercede on your behalf and ask God to have mercy on each and every one of us so we can be strong enough to endure whatever it is that the enemy has coming. But he has already won. We just need to survive the battles that are coming along the way. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean on understanding all your ways and knowledge, and He will make your path straight. I say it, I've been saying it every week for the last two years. 
Go to the Proverbs and read what Proverbs says. Read it to your children. Read it to yourself. Solomon, as smart as he was, failed. As wise as he was, failed. But yet he left behind some of the most beautiful writings that there are in the scriptures. Let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord today and understand what it means for the world to be coveting the throne of God. Let us ask the Lord to bless us and protect us today. Amen. Amen.